Good morning and welcome to worship here at Lion Lake United Methodist Church. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. So hear these words. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will put down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for your, for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So in this... So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we're continuing our series on stewardship. We've been talking about stewardship and the stewardship particularly of money. How is it that we maintain our money? How is it that we use our money? How is it that we as faithful Christians should approach the whole idea of money? And so we've been using John Wesley's three rules for money, to earn all we can, to save all we can, and to give all we can. Last week we talked about earning all we can, and about how it doesn't mean earning all we can uh, at all cost. It means earning all we can in a way that doesn't kill us, literally, that doesn't lead to damage to our neighbors and doesn't endanger our soul. And today, we're going to be talking about saving, how we should save all that we can. Now, it's important to note that saving is different than hoarding. Hoarding wealth means keeping more than we could ever possibly use, keeping things no matter what, clutching onto stuff and not letting it go at all. You hear news stories about hoarders, right? People who um, keep stuff to, to an extreme extent. And, and that most people are not hoarders to that degree. But I think if we're honest, all of us have things that sometimes we are probably a little too reticent to give up. Things that we want to keep, not because uh, we are keeping it for any purpose or for anything, but we just like having things. We like having possessions. I love books. I love to read. From my earliest years, I love to read. I love to have books. I love to have bookshelves. Uh, and so I love to have books. The problem is I'm a pastor, and so sometimes I move. And indeed, uh, the move from here to, uh, to from, from Rochester to here, to Albion, uh, was one that was our third move in four years. And as we were packing up all our many beautiful, beautiful books, my wife said to me, Joel, we can't move all, keep moving all these books. You've got to purge some of them. And that was the hardest thing she's ever told me. Because I love books. I love to read. I love to have them. But as I was packing, I think it was the 15th book box, I thought to myself, well, maybe she's right. Maybe I don't quite need these trashy sci-fi novels I read in high school and have never picked up again. I, maybe I don't need to re have all of these... Uh, books on theology that I've probably never going to read or never will read. And so I began the process of pruning and purging, keeping the books that it really meant something, or really I might like to read or I might like to have my kids read, but giving away the books that, I, if I'm honest with myself, I probably never will read. And if I was honest with myself, I wasn't keeping them because I wanted uh, to read them again. I was keeping them because I loved having lots of books. So sometimes we all have this hoarding mentality. Saving is different, though. Saving is about prudently managing what we have for some uh, realistic future event. Prudently managing what we have for something that might realistically happen in the future, but not more than what we absolutely need. Uh, back in the year 1999, when it was going to be 1999 transferring over to 2000 in the new year, there was this concern about computers, and there's this worry, it was called Y2K, this worry that when we moved from having uh, the, the year and computers was 99, and moving at the zero, zero, somehow the computers were gonna get all confused and global chaos would reign. And people were worried about this. There was 
you know, fear mongering, being ginned up, and and people got worried. And so as we're going in December up to New Year's, my mom starts filling up containers of water. We lived out just outside Traverse City, and we had well water. And she started filling up uh, jugs and jugs and jugs of water. And being a, a teenager and teenage boy, I made fun of her for it. And I said, Mom, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> Our well isn't even connected to the internet. How is that going to be an issue? And she just kept saying, like, well, it's good to be prepared no matter what. And so New Year's Eve rolled around. Y2K didn't happen. The computers didn't shut down. Life was fine. And I was vindicated. And I may have told my mom a couple times, I told you so until five days later when our well broke. And all of a sudden, we didn't have any water. And all of a sudden, the only way for me to get a drink of water was to go to the jugs of water my mom had saved in the basement. And every time I went down to grab some another jug of water, she would just look at me and not say anything, but give me that mom look that said, I told you so. So my mom was not hoarding water. She wasn't doing it in an unhealthy way. But as folk who lived for the first time <clears throat> in our lives on well water, it was not a, a unreasonable thing to save some water in case the well goes out, which it did. So we need to have this understanding of the difference between saving and hoarding. And stewardship is necessarily about understanding that difference. Being good stewards of the money that God has given us is about understanding what is a reasonable and prudent thing to save and what is going overboard what is hoarding the gifts and resources that God has given us to use in mission and ministry. And so we get this story from Jesus, this parable, uh, where someone says to him, Jesus, uh, help me divide uh, my inheritance with me. And this person's really asking Jesus that he wants some money. He wants to have more money. And Jesus says to him, uh, as often Jesus does, doesn't actually answer his question. Said, well, who am I to judge? Which is funny coming from Jesus, but says, who am I to judge? And then says, take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And I think Jesus is understanding where this guy's question is coming from. He's really not asking for some uh, disposition on the law. He's asking for more money that he thinks he needs or that he wants. And then he tells this parable, Jesus tells this parable, where there's this rich man who has an abundance of wealth and notably always has barns, has the ability to store that wealth. And all of a sudden comes into some more wealth and, and decides, I'm going to pull down my perfectly good barns, I'm going to build new ones, and then I'm going to have tons uh, of room for all of my possessions, for all of the things I have. And then I am going to say to myself, self, I am doing well, I'm just going to sit back and relax. And then the story goes, God comes to him and says, hey, you fool, you're going to die tonight. And then what's going to happen to all the things you have built up, all those possessions that you have? Jesus is asking us this very explicit question. Are the things that we are saving a prudent hedge against the future? Or are we just accumulating unnecessary wealth, thinking that we are going to live in, in wealth, live comfortable, frivolous lives. Not only our possessions, saying the things are impermanent, the, the things that we have are, are, are not going to last. And ask that question at the end, what's more important? Wealth, the accumulation of more things, or our relationship with God? And indeed, not only are possessions impermanent, but they are not actually ours. Part of the deal of stewardship is that understanding that the things are not our possessions. They are not things that we own. We have use of them. We are able to, to make use of them, but we don't own them. John Wesley has this quote talking about stewardship. He says, The possessor of heaven and earth brought you into being and placed you in this world, not as a proprietor, but as a steward. As such, he entrusted you for a season with goods of various kinds, but the sole property of these still rests in him. As you yourself are not your own, but his, such is, likewise, all that you enjoy. Such is your soul and your body, not your own, but God's, and so is your substance in particular. And he has told you in the most clear and expressed terms how you are to employ it for him, in such a manner that it will be all a holy sacrifice acceptable through Christ Jesus." We are not at liberty to use what he has lodged in our hands as we please, but as he pleases, who alone is the possessor of heaven and earth. We have no right to dispose of anything we have, but according to his will, 
seeing we are not proprietors of any of these things. One of the reasons I love Wesley is he cuts to the chase. Uh, and, and indeed, in some of his journals, it's noted that sometimes people don't like the things he's preaching at them. But Wesley here is saying very clearly, it's not ours. If we believe that God is the God of the creator of the whole world, then there is no such thing as our personal possessions. There is no such thing as things that are ours. It is things that we have stewardship over. It is things that we are stewards of. We can use them. We can use them for our benefit, for the benefit of our children, for the benefit of the world. But at the end of the day, it is God's. And God's ex God expects us to use everything, our soul, our bodies, our possessions, for the glory of God. And this is, this is real hard for us, right? Because it goes against everything we're taught in the world, right? It goes against the whole idea of, of, of ownership, of property, this understanding that that we <laughs> this understanding that, that there are things that are mine as me and my two as my two boys would would tell you mine is a powerful word and sometimes uh, people can really uh, get caught up in having things be mine but if we are faithful to the gospel we believe that it really isn't ours that it's God's and we're merely taking care of it so then we should save all that we can for God's glory how do we do this well I think first we can save enough for a rainy day, All right? Just like my mom was saving that, those jugs of water for the eventuality that maybe our our uh, well would go out. It's okay to save for a rainy day, to say I have a, 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 you know, an emergency fund, to save for retirement. Those are good things. To save enough that we will have enough to live on or that enough that if we lose our job or something happens to us, we will have uh, a way to, to go through that. And maybe even, give enough a little bit for our kids. Now it's important to note a little bit. Inheritance is something that can be tricky. Bill Gates, who at one time was the, the richest man in the world, the founder of Microsoft, was once asked how much he's, of his fortune, his bill, literally billions and billions of dollars, is he gonna give away to his kids? And he had this great line, and he said that I'm gonna give my kids enough so that they can do anything they want to, but not enough that they can do nothing, all right? He's going to give them enough so that they can be set up for success in the world, but he's not going to give them enough money that they can just live off it and have no job at all. One of the ways uh, financial planners think about this is uh, when you're thinking about your inheritance, when you're thinking about your will and, and, and testament, think about adding the church as an extra child for inheritance. If you're going to divide up your inheritance between your, uh, between your kids or, or nieces and nephews or whoever, Make sure the church is included. God and God's mission is included in that thing. The second thing we can do, besides saving for a rainy day, is finding help in being disciplined in spending and saving. Having accountability partners is really important. Having folk who help us keep to account of the things that we might want to spend our money on, or the things that we might not want to not give away, as me and books and my wife are a uh, indicator. Find accountability partners. When I was in uh, Belfast, Northern Ireland, doing mission work there after college, one of the, the parts of the program was that we were living on, on very little. We were supposed to be living just on subsistence wages, so we had enough, we were given enough money that we could uh, eat and, and get to work and, and, and do the things we were there to do, but it was by no means enough to be frivolous. Uh, my uh, my my weekly uh, income was this is back in 2008 it was about a hundred dollars, and then out of that I had to buy groceries, I had to buy uh, anything else that I needed, and so it was not a ton of money, and so I had always grown up tithing. I always grown up giving 10% of of what I got from work for the odd and end jobs or for uh, allowance back to God, and I was talking to my dad about this uh, as I was in Belfast, and I was saying you know. I'm really, I'm kind of involved in mission work, so really, all that I'm doing is for God. So do I really need to tithe too? You know, I'm working at this church and, and, and I'm doing work there, but do I really need to tithe? And my dad said to me, yes, yes, you do need to tithe. Even the small stipend you are getting, God wants you to tithe that to the church that you're working at, to the community that you're a part of. Because if you're a part of that community, if you have the ability to do it, and you know, ten dollars a week is not gonna is not gonna uh, you know put you in the poorhouse. Then yes, you should tithe what you are living on. 
Second thing we can do is you know engage in automatic saving, engage in ways saving in ways that that help us out, that that help do it for us automatically. That's one of the things about retirement savings, that it comes automatically out of your paycheck, and so you don't have to worry about it. And psychologists have found that that's a powerful tool, because if it's up to us to, say, take money out, uh, we don't do it. But if it already happens and we're not expecting it, then it's good. And then the final thing is this, and that is to do it all for God's glory. Whatever we are saving, whatever we're planning to give to our kids, Whatever we are doing, make sure that it is for God's glory, that we are doing it for the mission of Christ in the world. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks that you give all things to us. And we ask that you would help us be good stewards of this, these gifts, that we might continue to be your people. Amen.